The Vaporfly Next% 3 is Nike's most popular super shoe and it's designed to be a versatile racer for everything from 5Ks to full marathons. I'm Brandon with Running Shoes Guru. I've run over 120 kilometers in the Vaporfly 3 and this is my full review. The Vaporfly is the most popular carbon plated shoe and it's become the default super shoe because it was the original and because it's the most widely available. I reviewed this shoe two years ago and since then I've put a lot of miles on it. I've trained in it and I've raced in it. And while I found it to be incredibly fast, it also became very unstable towards the end of races. It's been two years since the last Vaporfly was launched. So this year's Vaporfly 3 has been very highly anticipated. It's one of the biggest launches of the year and it's been updated from the ground up. The Vaporfly 3 is a much better long distance racer for marathons compared to previous Vaporflies. It's got extra cushioning, it's got better stability and it's also a lighter weight. But the downside is that it doesn't feel as fast as the Vaporfly 2 because of the softer ride. To me, the Vaporfly feels like a much friendlier super shoe. So it's for runners who don't have a perfectly neutral foot strike. It's got a wider base, so it's much easier to corner in the shoe and the extra stability makes it better for long runs and easy paces. Versatility has improved and I enjoyed it on all types of paces from easy down to fast intervals. For me, the sweet spot is marathon pace because of how soft the ride is. The aggressive toe spring is something that I feel is missing in the Vaporfly 3. And when compared to other super shoes, the Vaporfly 3 feels flatter and not as propulsive. So there's less of a forward tipping sensation. The outsole has a flatter profile, so transitions are smoother. But as usual, Zoom X is a very delicate. So all this exposed midsole foam scuffs very easily and I don't think the Vaporfly 3 is as durable as the previous version. When it comes to the upper, the biggest difference is that the midfoot and the forefoot are wider and more accommodating. So it fits like a comfortable trainer rather than a snug racer. The fit is true to size and I think that wide footed runners will find it much more comfortable than previous Vaporflies. The holes in the flynet are now much bigger, so it's the most breathable super shoe on the market. The tongue is not gusseted, but it doesn't slide around because the laces go through a loop on the tongue and overall foot lockdown is excellent. The Vaporfly 3 is a really polished, thoughtfully designed racer and it's a great update to the most popular super shoe. I think that this version will make the series even more popular because it's lighter, more stable and more cushioned. The one downside is that it's less durable because the outsole has more ground contact. I would easily pick this version over the Vaporfly 2 because I feel that it suits my running style better. It's much more stable. I would also pick this version over the Alpha Fly 2 because the midfoot doesn't dig into my arch and give me blisters. When compared to the top tier super shoes like the Endorphin Elite, and the Rocket X2, the Vaporfly 3 doesn't feel as fast because its four foot rocker isn't as aggressive. But the Vaporfly 3 is lighter and it's more comfortable. If you've also been impressed with the Vaporfly 3, let us know down in the comments section below. You can also read my full written review on Running Shoes Guru. Thanks for watching and please like the video and subscribe to Running Shoes Guru.